Alrighty, welcome back boys and girls. It's your man, I'm Ben Mitchell. I'm coming to you live from Summit Academy. In this video, closing out this interim practice with us, part number three, still we'll be able to summarize what we have learned from trimester three and apply it to these problems. So number 15, pick up where we left off on the part two video. It says in December and January, it snowed 24 inches in Denver. And in December, it snowed two more inches than it did in January. How many inches did it snow in January? So what you can do is you can come up with the system of equations. And the reason why we have a system is because we're going to have at least, so this is at least two. So that just means that we're going to have a couple of equations on the same graph. So we're going to say if December and January combined is 24 inches, we can write it like this. We're going to say x plus y equals 24. And we're going to say that December is going to be, let's say December is going to be I'm going to say December is going to be Y. So we let December be Y and January, January be X. So that way we can have our two variables defined. And now for the second one, we're going to say since December it snowed two more inches, so we're going to say X plus two. And that's asking how much did it snow in January. So what you can do is you can Anytime you have the equation, always graph it out. So what we can do is we can graph our equation. So let me pull up Desmos. I'm going to graph my system of equations because I have to graph both of them. So let me pull this up. And so now I'm going to say, okay, my first equation was x plus y equals 24. And my second equation is y equals 2 plus x. So I have to find now where those two lines intersect and as soon as I find that point I'll be able to uh, figure out what I'm looking for. So I'm going to say that since x is going to be my value for January then I can say that this solution point is going to be 11. So you have to be careful when you find these two you can say okay find my solution point and say the x value. So we're going to say solution point our solution point was 11 comma 13 and we said since January since January is X that's what we're looking for so we're gonna say that it's going to be B which is 11 another way you could have done it is like this I could uh, take my two equations let me erase this and I'm going to say, okay, here's my two equations. I have x plus y equals 24 and y equals x plus 2. So here's my two equations. What you can do is I can sub in into that original. So I can use substitution. And I can sub it in. So I'm going to rewrite it. So I have my first equation is x plus, And instead of y, I now have x plus 2 equals 24. And now I can solve it. So we'll say solve for x. So what we can do is I can say I can combine these two together to be this is 2x and then the rest stays the same. So 2x plus 2 equals 24. Now I have a two-step equation. Subtract 2 from both sides. And so this is going to, going to be 2x equals 22. And then last step is divide both sides by the coefficient. So divide both sides by 2. And so we get x equals 11. So that's another way you can do it to solve without graphing. Just make sure you choose one that works best for you. So working on number 16, it says the distance from Earth to the moon is approximately 2.4 times 10 to the fifth power miles. And then it says the distance from Earth to the sun is approximately 9.2 times 10 to the seventh our miles. How many times closer is the Earth is the Earth 
to the moon compared to the sun. So what we're going to say we have to do is we're going to say we have to divide. We have to divide these two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these two values and divide them. So I'm going to say I have, like this, I'm going to say I have 9.2 times 10 to the exponent of 7 divided by... Two point four times ten to the fifth power, and so what you can do is I can kind of separate this so I can divide these two numbers, and so when I divide these two, I'm going to say this can be equal to three point eight, and then I can since I have that these two are the same same base, I can subtract exponents. So what that means is that's going to have this times 10 to the exponent of 7 minus 5. So all together, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to 3.8 times 10 to the exponent of 2. That's going to be my final answer. But what you can do is always check on Desmos. So let me pull up my Desmos calculator and clear it out from last problem. The home button, clear it out. So I type it in exactly as it looks. So I said I take 9.2 times 10 to the exponent of 7. And then what I can do is I can highlight. Let's highlight this entire thing and then hit the divide because I need to divide the entire thing by 2.4 times 10 to the exponent of 5. And notice, again, it kind of gives us a number like this, but what we can do is... We can say that, hey, I have that 3.8. I would move it over two times. So it's almost like it's almost like this answer, which let me hide this real quick. I would say this is the same as if I move it two times to the right, it would be 3. Point, or sorry, it'd be 383. So it's pretty close to what we had. Again, we're saying which is closest to this answer. So we can say it's going to be those two. So make sure you can change between, again, this is scientific notation. We're changing that to a standard form. Alrighty. Then for number 17, it says functions A and B are linear functions and are shown or described below. So it gives us one equation. is going to be for equation or function a is y equals 3x plus 1 and function b it gives us this table and it says which function has a higher rate of change so what we have to do is find the unit rate for each function and we have to show or explain or work on how we found each of those so what we can do is let me actually make this a little bit smaller so i can write so let's say for, let's do blue and red. So let's say, okay, this is going to be A right here. So I can say, all right, for A, function A, again, my, my equation is 3x plus 1. And again, that value attached to the variable is going to be our slope. So we're going to say, or our unit rate. So always be from, like we had from before. Get rid of this real quick. We're going to say unit rate is the same thing as slope. So that just means, again, that's going to be our change in y divided by our change in x. So what we can say for a, however, since we don't really have any points, we do have the equation. So it's going to be, we're going to say for a, the coefficient, coefficient of x is the rate of change, which, which is slope. And so we're going to say that's going to be, we're going to say slope is going to be equal to 3 for this one. So that's for that 
equation A, or that function A, I should say. And we're going to do B right here. So we're going to say for B, use this table. So we're going to say that, uh, let's say, let's find our change in our Y values. So this is increasing by 4, and this is increasing by 2. So we're going to say, again, our rate of change is going to be equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. So we just write it like a fraction. So we say 4 over 2, which is the same thing as 2. So here's our two values that we have. We have 2 and 3. And so we're going to say in conclusion then, which one is higher? We're going to say function function a has a greater, uh, let's say, rate of change than function B since 3 is greater than 2. So again, you can kind of put those different pieces together Again, make sure you can you know, write a sentence explaining what you're doing and be able to show your work so that way you can get that full credit. For number 18, it says some values of an exponential function a and b are shown in the table and in the graph. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find that y-intercept. So again, when you're talking about the y-intercept, two th different things that it's talking about. It's where x equals 0 and it's uh, the, and it is where the graph hits the, uh, sorry, the y-axis. So in our table, in our table, again, that's, we, we said it's where it's zero, so let me highlight it. So we're saying, you know, it's where x equals zero. So our y-intercept for this is going to be, we're going to say y-intercept is going to be equal to 1. And then we say, okay, well, we can highlight our y-axis in the graph. And we can say, well, where's our y-intercept at? Well, it's right here. When I say y-intercept is equal to 2. And so now we have to compare. It's saying, okay, well, the function a is actually less than the function of b. So we're going to say that it's going to be this choice because we're saying the y-intercept of Function A is one unit less than the y-intercept of B. So you should be able to just say, you know, 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's the only difference between those two, but there's different ways of writing it. All right, last two problems here. For number 19, it says Miguel saves the amount of money into a bank account each week. The bank account started with uh, some amount of money in it. After three weeks, the bank account contained $250, and after 10 weeks, the bank account contained $600. What it's asking us to do first is to write an equation that can be used to model the number of dollars Y Miguel saves in X week. So we have to have it in terms of X and Y. And the next part is to explain what the slope and Y intercept of our equation means in the context of this situation. So what we're trying to do is let's come up with an equation. And so what we can do first though is we're going to use some of these values. So I have 3 goes with 250 and I have that 10 goes with 600. So I can make a table here. So let's say let me write this on the side here. Make a table. So we're going to say okay here's our table x and y. So then we have first, we have, I'll make this a little bit smaller, we have 3 goes with 250, and we have 10 goes with 600. And so what we can do is find, find our slope, which again, from that other problem, same idea, always going to be the change in y divided by that change in x. So we're going to say, again, that's going to be plus, what is that, 350, 
and this is going to be plus 7. So what we can do is we can say 350, 350 over 7, reduce that fraction, is going to be 50. So our slope is going to be 50. So we can start to write our equation. Again, it's going to be y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So what that gives us is we can say y equals 50x. And then what we have to figure out is how much did they start with? Well, what we can do is if we plug in, if we plug in our values, so I can use this, these two values, so I could say, or well, I need to solve, so let's say right here I can solve for b, and we can plug it in, so we have, this is plus b, so I'm going to say I have this, these two values I can use, so I'm going to say I have 250 equals 50x plus, or sorry, 50 times 3, because we know that x is 3, plus b. And we have to solve for b, so I'm going to subtract, uh, because this is 150, I'm going to subtract 150 from both the sides. And I could say that, hey, b is going to be equal to 150. Change the number, change this real quick. Well, it's a little bit easier to see, so this is 150 equals b. So instead of b, we can have, this is plus 150. So this is going to be our y-intercept for this equation. So this equation is going to be y equals 50x plus 150. So now that we have our equation, we have to explain what the slope and y-intercept means for this context of this problem. So what we can say is this, two things, because we want to make sure we identify each one. I want to say that the slope means that Miguel saves $50 per week. So each, each week he is depositing $50 into his bank account. And then the y-intercept means how much he started with. So he, the y-intercept means that Miguel started with $100 in his account. So just make sure you can save those different parts for this situation. And then for the last one, for number 20, it says Natasha, or sorry, the graph shows how much money Natasha has earned since she received a raise. And it says, how much does Natasha make in dollars per hour? So what we can do is we can, similar to last time, we can find two points that are on the graph. And we can say, okay, we can make a table. Make a table. So we're going to say, okay, here's our x, here's our y. So the first first point is 0 and 250 and our next point is going to be 10 comma 375 so make sure you can make your points and now I can find my slope which we said is that change in y a change in y or that change in x and so we can say all right our change in y is going to be plus 125 and our change in x is going to be plus 10 so we can write this ratio like this. I can say this is the same as 125 over 10. That just means for 10 hours of work, Natasha made $125. But we're trying to figure out how much per hour that is. And so we would say that's going to, when we divide that out, it's going to be $12.50 per hour. So again, it might look complicated at first, but what we can do is just use our tools that we had from this trimester. Be sure to ask questions as they come up and make sure you study this for our last test of the year. And as always, be sure to slam that uh, super slam that subscribe button.